So one of the most common HC RAS questions that I get is if you have a two dimensional model, how do you get a one dimensional average velocity from your channel or something like that? In case say you wanted to plug it into a scour calculator or proceed with some other simplified analysis. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This has been surprisingly difficult to do uh, until very recently in HC RAS. And so a lot of you are probably familiar with the profile line. A profile line is a way for you to look at your various outputs along some sort of linear transect in RAS. And so if we were to say go in and put in a profile line from here to here, we could visualize our results along that profile line. And so uh, I'm going to look at this result. I've got a velocity result here. So uh, I'm going to make sure that this is active and I'll go and I'll look at my velocity and I have my velocity along that profile line. And you can also go look at your velocity plotted against terrain and you'll get the cross section with a visualization of velocity. Now that's fine, but what if you're doing some sort of like wood calculator or riprap calculator and what you really need is an average velocity because the empiricism has been done against one dimensional velocities. Well, I suppose you could, you know, eyeball it or uh, there's a ta you, you get a table of velocities and so a lot of people will do a ream on some. And uh, the big question is, you know, why haven't we done this yet? Well, it's pretty much trivial if the line that you want the cross section from is parallel to the cell faces. But if the line isn't parallel to the cell faces, we have to make some assumptions. And it's something that we're gonna actually do on the compute. And so that's where we're gonna introduce the distinction between the profile line, which is this kind of real time tool that you can use to interact with linear results in your 2D model and what we call a reference line. The profile line is something that's you know, global. You can use it in your whole project. The reference line is geometry specific and is computed on runtime. Okay, so let's go add a reference line. I'm gonna come up to my base geometry and I'm gonna edit. And you'll see, you know, I've, I've already done a video on reference areas. We've got reference points if you want to pull a time series at a point. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to add a reference line. And again, I'm kind of interested in this bridge contraction here. Now remember, there's no upstream and downstream in a 2D model. But if you want your velocities to be positive, you are going to want to go from left to right facing downstream. So I'm going to put my reference line here. And you'll notice that I'm following the cell faces. And that's because you know we only actually know velocity at the faces, or a lot of these properties are computed at the faces. And so if you are going to try to com compute it average velocity, well, we can just go pick up everything on the faces and average it, and that's gonna be done without error. But if your reference line is at an angle to the cell faces, well, then now we have to project the data from the face onto the reference line, and that's going to require some assumptions and will generate some error. And so, you know, it's just best practice to have your cell faces aligned with flow anyways. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to make sure that I just, you know, fully follow my cell faces here, get my reference line, I'm going to call it contraction. Now, if you're used to the profile line, you might expect to just go in here and right click this and be on your way. But because we have to do this work of projecting the cell faces, we're gonna do this at runtime. We're not, this is actually just a real time thing you can get from each result. And so I'm gonna open up the model and this runs pretty fast. It's a steady flow model. So it's just gonna warm up and then run at a constant flow. All right, and so then, even now, we're not going to go in here and interact with this with Mapper. This is a result, and it's actually a time series result. And so the way that we're going to interact with this is we're just going to open the old school time series editor. And what you'll notice is that you know we automatically write reference lines essentially for your boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are reference lines, and so we will write a total flow and some of these data for that. And so in the same location, you'll also see the reference lines. And so you'll get a list of the reference lines, and by default, we'll give you the um, time series of elevation and average velocity. Now, this is a steady state run, and so what you see is that you know you, you have average velocity increases through the warm-up period and, and then stays constant but a time series, you will get a time series of average velocity. And there are actually a lot of things here that we, you can add if you go to options, variables. We're adding several things to this list, partially in preparation of providing the output you need for bridge scour, but you can add a max velocity. And then you can see, you know, what is the, you know, maximum single cell velocity compared to the average cross-section velocity. Uh, we can give you the hydraulic 
depth, which is something you also will often need for one-dimensionalized computations, um, as well as the max depth and a friction slope. The friction slope is really just back calculated out of the conveyance. It's you know Q over K squared, uh, but it'll get you a good start for a lot of these one-dimensionalized calculations. And so that's a little introduction to the reference lines and how to get one-dimensionalized results out of a 2D model.